to a beautiful morning here on uh, Boeing Plaza. It uh, couldn't be better. We're here for a very exciting day, a, a really kind of a, a public unveiling of an, a very important historical artifact. As many of you have probably seen in the press, but if you haven't, uh, we discovered a very important artifact right here in, in Oshkosh's backyard, which is this C-47, That's All Brother. Adam, what a moment, what, a, what an opportunity to explain to the world how we got to where we are. Uh, this airplane is symbolic of more than a piece of history. It's the thousands of lives it touched over the years and the millions ultimately that uh, were touched as a function of the sacrifices made by so many. How did this whole thing happen? Um, it came about, I, I, the first it came on my personal radar was about 18 months ago. I read a blog posting from Whitman Regional Airport here in Oshkosh and it, it seemed to be indicating that the airplane that led the D-Day invasion was here at Basla. I, I was just getting involved with the CAF at that time and I guess that initial blog posting just led to one thing after another and here we are today standing underneath that's all brother the airplane that led the d-day invasion and we're going to put it back in the air and we're going to you know do justice to the amazing history that's in in this metal caf does so much and has not only salvaged phenomenal pieces of history but they've gone on to fly that history so people can see hear feel I mean, just the vibrations, the rumble as a B-29 goes over or a B-25 taxis pass. All these things are critically important and really quite unique as far as what organizations do. Uh, is CAF uh, really tasked to the limit with all that they've got going on right now? Um, no, I, we've, we've actually got a lot of momentum as an organization right now. Actually, this Kickstarter that we did to fundraise for this aeroplane, in many ways, for us, it was not so much about the money, it was also about 2,106 people stepped forward and said, I want to be part of this. And in the long run, making friends and getting over 2,000 people excited, that's the energy that keeps our organization going. So as long as we can keep people enthusiastic and keep people believing in the mission, there's sort of no limit to what we can do. We're so excited to, to show this airplane to the public, to have guys like Dale Dye and Pee Wee Martin here to really get the emotional weight behind it. These are guys that are telling the story all the time. Pee Wee lived it. So now we can take this to the people and say, look, here's what we're trying to do. We want to put this airplane all the way back, restored to the condition it was when it flew on that day in 1944, turning it into an educational flying classroom. You know, kids today aren't learning history the way that I did or the way that you did. So we can really make a deep imprint when they get inside the airplane. If we put them through a little bit of a course like it, what it was like to be a paratrooper and then lead them through some leadership and inspirational training. So that's the goal. But then to be able to show this airplane and fly it from place to place, show it at air shows, show it at air venture, let the people see history. You know, you get a sense of chills up your spine when you walk inside and think, wow, you know, guys actually jumped out on D-Day from this airplane, lived and died and helped secure our freedom. Where does this airplane go from here? We've got a strong emotional story, but now there's the mechanical story. This thing is going to have to be gone through from stem to stern, inside to outside. This is going to be a remarkable process, thousands upon thousands of hours. What's the schedule look like and when will we see this fly in Oshkosh? Well, Jim, it's dependent on a couple of things. First of all, our, our friends at Bazar, we're going to pull the wings off here and have a full evaluation done. We just don't know what's inside the airplane, inside the fuselage, in the tail, in the wings. So we have to find, we, we, our goal is to get, get it all the way back so it'll last 75, 100 years. So we're going to search out, make sure we get all the, uh, the corrosion taken care of, put it all the way back together. So it's a function of what do we find, and it's a function of money. I mean, as, all, as you know, what makes airplanes fly is money. We're on a fundraising campaign right now to put together the funds to do whatever restoration work is necessary. I don't know the timing. We want to do a lot of the work wherever we can to get it done quickly. Our members will want to be involved. We certainly know we won't miss D-Day 2019, but at this point I just can't tell you the exact schedule. But we estimate certainly between a million and a million five when it's all said and done, I think, to pull it off. And what's great is we've, we've done so well. We've gotten $350,000 through Kickstarter. We've got $350,000 from an individual donor. And that's just in the early time frame. But, you know, $20 a time, $50 a time, I couldn't believe how many people send in $1,000 who never even been involved with us or Warbirds before, but they were struck by the story and they want to see it saved. I'll tell you what, it's God's work to our thinking. We appreciate what you're doing here, and we're looking forward to following this all along the way. Thanks for telling our story, Jim. We appreciate you guys putting it out there and so that all your readers and listeners can, uh, can really get involved. And if they can go to that'sallbrother.org, 
they can become a part of it. Excellent. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Aero TV is brought to you by... Since 2001, MGL Avionics has produced avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. The flagship product is the IEFIS, a comprehensive next-generation flight, engine, and navigation instrument designed to meet the demands of the modern pilot. See more at www.mglavionics.com.